Welcome back to Fantasy Football Today. It's now time for Overreaction Monday, where you guys are panicked, and we will hopefully, maybe, maybe make you feel a little bit better about some guys who have certainly been struggling through the first two weeks of the season. I'm Jamie. That's Heath. Let's get right to it. So I posted this tweet just to give you guys an example of some players who are struggling, and I wanted to show really the, the, how many of the responses were. Uh, the responses were immense. Almost 500 people responding to this just in terms of how many uh, players you're panicked about. And the, and the overwhelming theme was a lot of Clyde edwards uh some Josh Allen, some Ryan Tannehill, a lot of A.J. Brown, a lot of Allen Robinson, some of the names that were listed here. James Robinson certainly dominating this list. Uh, Antonio Gibson, George Kittle. We're going to talk about a lot of these guys. So let's get right to it. We'll show you the quarterbacks here that we're talking about that are people are a little bit panicked about. And you see their fantasy production through the first two weeks of the season. Now, we could have listed a lot of quarterbacks, obviously, but these are the ones that were either drafted with some expectations. Clearly, the starting guys of Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Ryan Tannehill. Some fringe quarterbacks that you could be planning on starting in deeper leagues, Joe Burrow and Ben Roethlisberger. So, Keith, when you look at this list, who has you the most concerned or maybe the most optimistic about turning things around moving forward? Most concerned would have definitely been Roethlisberger, but I'll be optimistic. It's Justin Herbert. He's fourth in the NFL right now in passing yards, and he might have lost 150 to 200 yards in that game against the Cowboys. He might have lost 150 from, touchdowns. From, from, <laughs> from penalties. I think he lost three touchdowns <laughs> right. due to penalties, and some of those calls were pretty questionable. I just think everything we've seen with the new offense, with the involvement of Mike Williams, with the way he's playing, tells us he's going to be a top seven or eight fantasy quarterback the rest of the way. Keep him in your lineup. Relax. Buy low, buy low. And I'll say the same thing about Josh Allen. We know that it's been a little bit of a rough go for him. And he hasn't looked great. But let's take it to account. The Steelers' defense, when healthy, is really good. And that's who he had to play in week one. And the Dolphins' defense, still really good. So I'm going to buy low on Josh Allen also. But Allen and Herbert, two quarterbacks I wouldn't really worry too much about. Same thing with Tannehill and Burrow. I think they're all going to be fine. So calm down about those quarterbacks in particular. Let's go now to the running backs that you could be a little bit concerned about. Now, this list has a lot more names that have people a little bit more worried. And you see the production for some of these guys. Barkley is easy, I think, to understand what he's dealing with. So we know what's kind of going through the situation with him. The other player, and I'm not really going to worry about Antonio Gibson too much. I don't know about you. But Clyde edwards helaire you can see where the flaws are. They're coming up again. James Robinson looks to me like a disaster. Miles Gaskin, now with two are hurt, looks like could be a little bit of a problem. And Mike Davis, while I think he played better, at least in my estimation, than what I thought going into the Tampa Bay game, we know Cordero Patterson's going to be there and may not be going away. So of these guys, who has you the most concerned? Or again, somebody that you'd be looking to buy low on? Most concerned relative to cost would definitely be Clyde. But as far as the guy I, I might buy low on, it's actually James Robinson, despite really? how terrible Jacksonville looks. And it's just because it seems like it only took one week for Urban Meyer to realize, hey, I don't want to give half of the carries <laughs> yeah. to Carlos Hyde. We saw 11 carries instead of five in week one. We caught three balls in both games. So I do think there's a chance. I don't think James Robinson's going to be anything close to what he was. And he's not going to be worth the draft pick that he cost after ETN got hurt. But I think the perception on him has fallen so far now. I don't mind him as a number two running back, a low-end number two running back the rest of the way. And I guess we could tie in the LaVisca Chenault injury that maybe right. some of those short area targets that Chenault got in week one hopefully goes to uh, James Robinson in week three if Chenault can't play in the game dealing with that shoulder injury. For me, the one that I'm the most concerned about but I would also be buying low on would be still Clyde Edwards-Hilaire because he plays in this offense for the Chiefs. And I know the fumble was bad, and I thought he played better against Baltimore. But as long as they're not going to bring somebody else in, which we saw last year, he's still going to be the running back for the Chiefs, and you could probably get him as cheap as you'll ever find him. So I would try and get Clyde Edwards-Alaire cheap, and hopefully there's still better games ahead for him as long as he's healthy. But right now, things look very bad for Clyde Edwards-Alaire coming off that fumble and disappointing performance against the Ravens. Let's look at the wide receivers now that we're talking about here from players who have been a little disappointing. And I think Metcalf doesn't necessarily belong on this list. I got too many suggestions about him <laughs> being on the list, but uh, getting overshadowed completely by Tyler Lock, and he was limping around in that game. Uh, against um, the Titans on Sunday, but we'll see how things go for him. But you see the names here. A.J. Brown, obviously not living up to expectations. Allen Robinson, certainly the case. Uh, Robert Woods, for sure. Kenny Galladay screaming at his quarterback. Robbie Anderson, Brandon Ayuk, we know the story there. And Chase Claypool, also a little bit of a struggle, but who knows how long Deontay Johnson could be out, and that could help things turn around for him. So, same question. Who are you either most concerned about or buying low on? Well, I'm terrified for Brandon Ayuk, but I'm going to try to hold one more week. For DK Metcalf, I would absolutely be trying to buy low. We, we've seen this both from him and Tyler Lockett over and over. Last year, he had week 10, week 11, he had 77 yards in the two games combined. The next game, he had 177. You don't sit DK Metcalf. You don't worry about DK Metcalf. Certainly don't sell DK Metcalf right now. Yep, uh, a buy low opportunity still because some big blow. As long as he's healthy. You know, he was, again, limping around in that game. 
I think for Robert Woods, you look at what the production has been for Cooper Cup, and it's clearly overshadowing him. Now, he hasn't been a complete disaster, because you see here 11 PPR points each of the first two weeks. But he hasn't lived up to the expectations when we were telling you that he was a borderline number one receiver coming into the season. I still think there's better days ahead. Now, will he be the breakout candidate that Dave Richard was saying? Probably not as long as Cooper Cup is healthy. And Van Jefferson ran more routes than we saw from Robert Woods in week one. But still, he's too good of a player. There's too much on the table for him still with Matthew Stafford. Calm down on Robert Woods. Buy low if you can. A lot of these guys still very, very much buy low candidates, Allen Robinson included, with Justin Fields potentially starting. At the tight end position, there aren't a lot of guys that people are panicked about because we know it's a thin position to begin with. But George Kittle, Mark Andrews, and Mike Gusecki have gotten off to really slow starts. Now, Gusecki's in a different category than the other two. But when you look at Kittle and you look at Andrews, concerned or buying low? Buying low on both. Um, a little bit more concerned, I think, maybe about Andrews right now. Although, Kittle's just doesn't make any sense to me. But they're not really throwing the ball down the field. And Debo Samuel's getting everything. I don't think either one of these guys are going to be a problem, though. I expect them both to be top six tight ends. All right, so Kittle gets the Packers in week three. Hopefully better days are ahead. And guess who Mark Andrews gets in week three? The Detroit Lions. Buy low on both of those guys now. Gusecki Harty say he's a buy low candidate when you're looking at the situation with Tua being banged up. So we'll see what happens with all of these guys, these overreaction candidates. We still love a lot of these players. But maybe when we come back on Monday in week three, we could have a little bit more concern when we get to our next overreaction Monday next week. But for now, buy low on a lot of these guys because there's still better days ahead. Want more of the Fantasy Football Today podcast and nonstop year-round fantasy advice? It's simple. Hit the subscribe button and hang with us all throughout the year.